The days grow shorter, the leaves are falling, the pumpkins are ready to be carved, and the ghosts are becoming restless. It is October. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Harry's Book Cafe. Uh, it is October, the month of Halloween, and we agree Halloween is not complete without horror books recommendations, right? Um, so I will introduce 10 horror books in this uh, video. They are not in any particular orders at all, but please do watch until the end because I will introduce two non-fiction books that are absolutely fantastic and I think they are uh, really, really good for October. But let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Um, so I will describe something that's related to one of those non-fiction books just to whet your appetite. So first, you will feel a slight headache your throats are hurting and the temperature is running. On the second day, your head is hurting even worse. Your throat feels like someone is cutting it open with a very dull knife and your temperature keeps rising. At day three, your temperature will rise all the way to 41 degrees and stay there. You can't even speak because your throat is, is in so much pain. You find it difficult to actually swallow water um, you headache, it's pounding like hell. No matter how many paracetamol you manage to chew, how many aspirins, they're not even touching the side of it. On the fourth day, you start to bleed, first from your nose, then from your eyes, from your gum, from any other, every other orifice your body has. And they're not stopping. On the fifth day, your skin becomes loose. You touch it, they are hot and soft to touch, they come loose from your muscle and when you touch it, it feels as if you are touching something squeegee. On the sixth day, the bleeding gets worse. You are in much worse pain. You can't move because you are just so in so much pain. On the sixth day, you die. Okay, guys, so that's the subject of one of the non-fictions which I will introduce later in this video. But without further ado, let's dig into the recommendation. So the first one is uh, Nick Cutter's uh, The Tube. And I think this is one of the classic all-time favorites for many, many horror fans. Uh, it is about this um, group of boys who are stranded on an island. And the island has some really sinister uh, experiments going on uh, on animals. Um, needless to say that this novel is perhaps one of the most graphicals of all the novels in this particular list. Uh, it is disgusting at times, um, especially the scene where they involve a sea turtle. I'm not going to divulge any more of the plots. Uh, you're going to really have to read it to find out. It is fantastic. It really is a, a, a beautiful novel. When I say beautiful, I mean grotesque. Many people's favorite horror. Really check it out. Second one is um, the one that I just finished reading and that's called Hidden Pictures. It's really, really fantastic. There's a huge twist that I did not see uh, at the end of the novel and that twist makes you... The twist doesn't come up suddenly. You draw this conclusion slowly and as you draw the conclusion you feel the hair on the back of your neck standing and that's at least how I felt last night. I finished it this morning. It's about this young woman, drug addict, managed to turn her life around uh, to become a babysitter for a wealthy family. But it is not as it seems. There's something deeply wrong in the house that they were occupying the, the, in the past at least. The, the kids that she was in charge of look after start drawing pictures. At, at, at first very cute pictures then the pictures turns quite sinister and scary, creepy, creepy, creepy. She realized that something is, is really, really wrong. Uh, once again, I'm not going to divulge any more plot lines. You're going to have to read it. It's really, really good. Um, the third novel is a classic King novel. Uh, no horror recommendations can go without uh, Stephen King's input. Uh, and that's Misery. Everybody, I think many people are quite familiar with the plot line because it was made in the movie and I believe uh, many of us have watched it. Um, so the plot line is about this famous writer. He crashed his car 
during a storm and he was rescued by a nurse who was his biggest fan. While he was in his manuscript, uh, sorry, in his briefcase, there's a manuscript of a new book that he's just finished. The nurse read the new book. She hates it because one of her um, favorite character was killed off by the writer. She forced him to rewrite the novel, write just one for her. Um, so basically the story involving her torturing him, uh, taking him hostage. I remember a scene vividly in my head where he hid a knife under his pillow and uh, he tried to escape in the middle of the night. He falls asleep, wakes up suddenly in the middle of the night, only to find out that the, the nurse is standing over him, staring at him without any expression. He then surreptitiously reaches behind his head, uh, beneath his pillow, trying to find the knife, only to realize that the nurse has it because she was holding it like this and says, Paul, is this what you're looking for? <laughs> I remember that scene very, very vividly. It is incredibly, incredibly creepy. Uh, I loved it. Okay, so the next one is Let's Go Play at the Adams. Perhaps the most disturbing of all the books here. Uh, this is a classic horror. Um, Let's Go Play at the Adams. It's basically a story of this nanny uh, in charge of looking after two kids and they were around about 11, 12 and their parents went on a vacation so the nanny has to stay with them for a couple of days. What happened was that those two kids invited many of their classmates to come join them and what happened is they, st they started, it began with starting to play pranks on the nanny then it sort of uh, deteriorates where they actually sort of bondaged the, the nerd nanny and start torturing her. It is quite an unpalatable book to read. Um, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, so <laughs> uh, take it with a, a pinch of salt. Okay, so the next one is called The Patient. Uh, and this is a novel that I first came across on a YouTube recommendation. Uh, I'm really interested in this one. So it's an epistolary novel. Epistolary simply means that a novel is written in forms of letters. Um, so a quick example would be Dracula. It doesn't have to be every page, but large proportion is written in letters and diary entrance. So that is a epistolary. Um, nowadays, of course, we don't really write uh, letters anymore. So we write emails. Uh, direct messagings, Instagrams, message, all this sort of message is uh, classified as epistolary. So this novel, it's about this doctor who newly graduated, very confident, psychiatric hospital by the way, so he got hired in this hospital, he realizes that things are not what they seem, they are quite creepy things going on and he uh, find out that there's a door behind which sits a uh, mysterious patient who was in the hospital since he was six now he's in his middle 40s nobody wants to be his doctor he find out why um, is because whoever treats him either goes mad or commit suicide but dr parker newly graduated uh, very confident Verges on being hubris, decided to be his doctor and things start to go wrong from there. The next one ticks all my boxes and that's the Moon of the Crested Snow. Um, so this is a story of a post-apocalyptic world um, and it involves in this small community somewhere in the north of Canada. During winter, they suffered a huge storm after huge snowstorm and they were completely cut off. And as food start to run low, people start panicking. The remain remnant of the council of, of the community it were, was really struggling to maintain order. And then things start to get even worse because one day a stranger arrives. He arrives from the south and soon after his arrival more and more people start to come along after him uh, and they start to take over from the council and things just get even worse from that moment on i haven't read this novel yet and i really really want to give it a try the next novel is the stolen tongue uh, i have done a full review you can find it here it is the scariest book 
out of all these uh, books. It involves a couple going to their cabin somewhere in the middle of the mountains in the Rockies and almost immediately things start to go wrong uh, because when they're sleeping they can hear voices um, whispering, talking outside their cabinet <laughs> bedroom windows but when they go out no one was there. Uh, what, what's, what's even worse is after a couple of days the, the woman of the couple she starts to answering them in her sleep it's really, really scary. I highly recommend you to check it out. Uh, but be warned, it is scary, so it might not be everyone's cup of tea. Okay, so the last fiction I want to recommend in this recommendation is um, American Psycho. I think, like Misery, many people are quite familiar with the plotline being, you know, the, the movie are so, full, um, so famous. It's about the depiction of consumerism and the decadence of 80s Wall Street in New York. The book, however, gets much, much more graphical than the, than the movie. I mean, the movie was bad enough, right? There's lots of graphical uh, details, but the book is 10 times worse. Trust me on that. It's, uh, it, uh, sections of it are really, really difficult to read, so be warned. I really, it's really good writing. The, the, it's so well written. I, uh, I find it an enjoyable read, despite the subject matter. Um, I like the fact that every single, <laughs> every second um, chapters are music reviews, and it really does. I think it really does reflect the unreliability um, of the narrator. You know, the the music reviews are completely irrelevant to what was being discussed here <laughs> a bit of American Psycho. Yeah, every other chapter is a music review. So, unhinged completely, very graphical, highly recommend it, check it out please. Um, the, the, the first non-fiction was also the one that I told you uh, in the beginning. So this one is called The Hot Zone and it's all about uh, Ebola viruses. If we think COVID is bad, Ebola makes COVID like walking in the park. It really is. Um, survival rate, 30% compared to 99% of COVID. It is a nasty, nasty disease. So this book reads like a fiction, even though it isn't. Uh, reads like a thriller, in fact. Um, it's about the discovery of Ebola virus and the human endeavor to try to find the source of of Ebola, they pretty much nailed down that is its community. Um, uh, the reservoir is bats, but they couldn't pinpoint any bats. Um, in theory, every evidence is points to what's bats, but they haven't even captured a single bat that carries Ebola virus. It's really mysterious, and it, it it gets it gets really really awesome. I think it, they made it into a movie or something or TV series. So so one of the doctors accidentally cut herself. <laughs> um, it is fantastic. You gotta read it with with a knife that was uh, that has Ebola virus in it. Um, as I said, it really does read like a, like a like a thriller. Highly recommended. Please please have a read. Uh, okay, so the last recommendation, the second non-fiction of this recommendation is uh, the plate, the plight of the living dead. And I read this a couple months ago before the channel. It was a phenomenal book. It tells, it tells us about this story of, you know, real zombies in the natural world. Um, and it's just incredibly well done. The zombies are everywhere, you know, are in, in, in the natural world. So for instance, in the opening sort of chapter, the, the, the writer leads us into a place uh, a laboratory where they were observing uh, wasps turning a cockroach into a zombie. After the deed was done, the cockroach loses all its self-preservation. It, it, it sort of follows the wasps around, and that's unnatural, right? It follows the wasps around, doing what the wasps want it to do. Um, at the end, the, the wasp leaves uh, his egg inside the cockroach and the cockroach just sits there, 
not moving. Happy to be a incubator for the eggs. And once the eggs hatches, they start eating the cockroaches, the cockroach. And yet again, he's not moving or moving lazily, quite happy to be eaten by those larvas. It's incredible. Um, and it explains how this actually turned out, how it works, how the, the cockroach loses its will to preserve itself. And everything was explained in easy language, scientific based, scientist science based, and this is just amazing. And this is just but one example of what's happening in the natural world. There are so many things going on. There are fungi making turning ants into zombies. There are so many chapters and, and each is relating to a unique phenomenon. They are small, but they are new. They are small, yet yeah, they are numerous because they're happening everywhere in our world. If we look closely, we'll realize those. Um, but how closely do we look? And it's just phenomenal. You know, it's happening right under our noses and we don't even know. And it's quite creepy at times that you can't help but to think from the cockroach's perspective. It is a phenomenal book. It's, uh, if you fancy some science-related creepy, creepy book, then this is the book for you. Okay, guys, that's pretty much it. That's the 10 books recommendation for this Halloween. And I really do hope that you have enjoyed uh, this recommendation. Please, please, please give those a try, especially the hot zone. Uh, the tube and the hidden pictures those three are perhaps my more more favorite ones than the others and that's taking nothing away from the others they are all fantastic i highly recommend that you give them a try have you read any of them what are your thoughts uh, please leave a comment down below uh, it is a new uh, channel it's a one-man band uh, just myself so please give it a thumb up and like and subscribe. It really does help a new channel like my YouTube recognize subscriptions, perhaps more than anything else. So if you can subscribe, that really does help me uh, out a lot. Uh, I will motivate myself and bring more contents like this very, very soon. Okay, guys, until next time. Cheerio.